Hello, everybody. Welcome to Week of the Brazil Hour. Back after a holiday week, we have the under 99 trials on the blast and uh, talk about broadcasting the bit. So, you guys, want to take it away? You got commentated that. How did that? Uh, how do you? Th- how do you think? Th- how do you think that went? That was pretty awesome. I had a good time. What about you, Cody? And it, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, I really think that it, it went way better than I could have ever expected. Um, if you if you didn't catch the event live when we were doing it, uh, we had a chat room going on. They had at, at one point there were 250 people in the chat room talking, and I mean there was a there was quite a list of people. Like uh, Riley Bodycomb was in there, uh, Keenan Cornelius, um, Octavia Bourdain, that's uh, Anthony Bourdain's wife from the the Travel Channel. Um, Ricardo Amendolia was, was in there. I saw him, uh, leave a comment and, and, you know, Keenan was really, you know, just responding to everybody. He was, he was answering a whole lot of questions. Uh, it was, it was pretty cool. Uh, it was, it was really interactive and, you know, it wasn't us just talking. I know we had a lot of audio trouble, uh, because of the, uh, the setup and we had some trouble with the, uh, you know, the school internet, but you know, everybody, everybody really seemed to enjoy what we were doing. And I think that made it a lot better than than I was expecting. Yeah, typically yes. we have our cameras out further so we can cover more space, but be tight there, and we didn't want to compete on any of ADC guys thing. Yeah, and speaking of the internet, we had to actually at to start off, we had to go get a kid out of detention. We actually, I went and pulled a kid out of detention. I went in there to ask for internet code, and it was detention. And I'm sorry, is this is a flash? Like, no, this is detention. I'm like, look, we're having trouble with the internet. Do you know the password? And one of the kid raises his hand. He's like, "Can I talk?" He's like, "I know the password." I'm like, "Of course, a young teenager's gonna know the password." So I asked the teacher, "I go, is there any way I can borrow for five minutes?" And she looks at me. She's like, "All right, bring him right back." And we had him for like twenty. It was like the kid loved it because I pulled him out of detention. I'm like, "On a Saturday, you're stuck in detention. There's nothing better than that." He wanted to sit in there and watch the matches, but I told him, "You know, go back. Don't get us in trouble." You know, so, but that was pretty awesome. So we got to get out of detention. So uh, that was pretty sweet. But anyway, we ended up using my phone for the internet. We ended up using my phone for the internet, and it, it seemed it was it was. I don't think it was the phone's fault. Was was the phone's fault? Was that was that the audio? Is that why we had a problem no, with the no. audio? Was audio the had nothing to do with no. the phone. Any okay. any lag had to do with the phone. So you should have told people to stop calling you because you're doing important stuff. Sorry. Right. Yeah. So uh, it was, the it was five cool. the five winners that we had were uh, Giovanni Martinez from uh, Tenth Planet at under sixty six kilos. Uh, Enrico Coco, uh, un- under 77. Matt Arroyo won the under 88 kilos. Tom DeBlas, our guest tonight, won the under 99 kilos. And Jason Lees uh, won the over 99 kilo division. So you can uh, you can check out a lot of the matches uh, on our YouTube page, um, on our Facebook page. Um, they'll all be up eventually. The four-hour uh, entire live broadcast is, is able to be viewed now. But we'll break up the individual matches when Stefanis uh, gets to it because it's a lot to go through. Oh, they're all there, but I just need names. So go on, watch the videos, and put up any names you know, so I can go in there and change them. Yeah. So if you and see, I, your- I, I think one, I think one of the standouts was Geo. He had some awesome, he had some awesome submissions. I think he won all his matches by submissions, and they were all different. I think he had he had a Dars, a Kimura, rear naked choke, in the rear first naked round. choke. He had one, I think he had one more of the kind of submission. I can't remember, but he had. I think he had four. He had four or five matches. I can't remember. He had. He had four. a lot, but he had some. He had. He had. He had some pretty spectacular matches. So, uh, shots out to him. That was pretty cool. There yeah. were there weren't many matches that went to the time where there no. were a lot of submissions. And like I said, remember at one point, all three mats, somebody was going for a hill hook. All three mats, there was a hill hook going on all one. So there was a. There was a probably eighty percent of the subs were. Or sub attempts were heel hooks, or some some form of a leg lock, which was really interesting. Which is what you see in a lot of nogi matches. So, it was well, when I started in 2011, I think the worlds had just happened, and uh, James Terlecki had posted up about what how many submissions were heel hooks. It seemed like that was the year of the heel hook, when like when it started to be widely used more. Yeah, it's definitely a nogi. It is definitely a a weapon of choice. So. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 good. Like, how else do you ex- describe that? You lock it in, you tap. Yeah, definitely. Oh. It's definitely. And we saw. I think we saw the, the first match. The guy was a. Uh, he popped his. He popped his. Popped his foot. 
That's all hold was the first match. Yeah, that's right. That was that was pretty early on. That guy, uh, that guy was limping around for yeah. a good while after that. Two so. people got put to sleep within the first half hour. Mm-hmm. It was definitely action packed. It was uh, it was fu- it was fun to bring the trials. You know, no one's ever brought the trials. You know, live for people to see. So it was a cool thing. It was a cool thing. I really enjoyed it. I'm just glad they let us do it. Yeah, that was really awesome of them. Yeah. Hey, uh, you want to give uh, Tom a call? Yeah, yeah, I'll bring him in. Tell him he'll be getting a call from a 724 number. Hello. Tom. Hey, Tom. How are you guys? Good. It's the BJJ Hour. It's Michael Mios. How are you doing? I'm pretty good, man. Pretty good. Yeah. Are you are are you recovered from this week? From last week? Oh yeah, I'm fine. I I, uh, I actually competed the last three weekends in a row, uh, and the ADCC trials were, were my third weekend. But like uh, the weekend before, I actually like really hurt my back, so it was pretty hard to like. The week of the ADCC trials, I really couldn't train much and uh, couldn't even warm up before my matches. It was pretty tough, but we got through it, and, uh, you know, I feel good, and back's feeling better, and, you know, I could train jiu-jitsu, like, every single day, multiple times a day. Definitely, like a true warrior. Now, what exactly did you do to your back? What what what, what was the problem? Man, I, I slipped my, my disc uh, on my lower back. I threw it out. I was actually... I heard it like probably like probably like three weeks ago, no, probably like a month ago, and then two weeks ago, like 20 minutes before my match, I had a no time limit submission only match against this guy Nelson Puentes, uh, an alliance black belt, and I was warming up and I jumped, like you know I, I like to you know do some like jump squats before I warm up, and uh, I threw it out bad, and I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not even gonna be able to compete, like I could hardly stand up on my own I, I was truly uh i had no idea what i was going to do you know my guys were like man just you know you'll be all right don't worry I'm like no i'm not going to be all right you know like i've fought before like a fractured hand a broken nose but like this was just like i couldn't breathe you know but it just so happened that nelson wanted to play 50 50 with me you know so i was actually able to not put so much pressure on my on my back and uh, i ended up catching him with a heel hook so I lucked out, and then, uh, you know, the trials, you know, as soon as I started, the back loosened up, and I was okay. Now, did that affect your strategy? Like, was your strategy based upon how your back was feeling when you entered the trial? Uh, I just had to be really careful, uh, really careful. You know, I mean, I, I couldn't really explode too much, you know what I mean? I had to really, con- you know, I've already, I've been competing for a long time, so, you know, I know how to compete, and... uh I just knew I couldn't do anything like too explosive and I just had to really, really be perfect, you know? So it definitely like, slowed me down. Absolutely. Like, man, it, it was just really nerve wracking. Like I didn't know how I was going to feel getting through like every match, you know, but, uh, you know, we made it. Thank God. Now, now when you said you had to be perfect, I, you didn't even give up a single point in the tournament. Did you in any, any of your matches? No, and, you know, to be honest, I've been competing now for about 13 years, and in the 13 years I've been competing, I've given up less than 15 points in my life. Uh, you know, when I competed in Abu Dhabi 2009, my first match was against Cyborg, and uh, it was 0-0, the match, and the referee gave him the decision. Then my second match was against Galvao. It was a good match. Uh, before points, you know, I swept him, he swept me, and then once points started, he took my back for like 45 seconds. I escaped. I like sat into a layback position, and time ran out. You know, so he was three of the points I gave up. But I really don't give up points. You know, uh, I know how not to get scored on, and I know how to win. You know, so yeah, I, I really, I, I basically knew, especially off the top. You know, like if you get taken down, you go to your knees. You're not giving up points. So I really don't. It's just not happening. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I couldn't see somebody scoring on me, you know, but uh, still fear. I was still, you know, nervous for my back. And of course, you could always get, you could always get caught, you know, that, that, that could happen to the best of them.
If you're talking right now, I can't hear anything that you're saying. I think we I think we lost Mike again. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Okay, so uh, we lost Mike, but I was just going to ask, you know, how important it is to have, you know, such a solid understanding of the rules. You know, you mentioned and, you know, you've been competing for 13 years. So how, you know, how big of an advantage is that to know the rules inside and out? And I know, I know ADCC has some pretty complicated rules. And since they don't have tournaments all the time, you know, is, I mean, how big of an advantage is that uh, when you're, you know, when you're competing against somebody that hasn't done a lot of ADCC tournaments and you want to know nine uh, and you went to the actual ADCC. So, you know, what kind of advantage does that give you going in? You know, I always like to think about it as common sense. I mean, I know ADCC has some, you know, tricky things like uh, if you're in mount or if you have somebody inside mount and they roll you, that gives up points. You know, that's three points when it's generally not points in any other tournament. However, you could just simplify that to say if you're on top, you better damn well stay on top. I don't care if you mount or you get side control, if somebody rolls you, that's points, you know. And then you just got to remember if you get taken down, you got to roll to your knees. Furthermore, if you take someone down, you can't let them roll to their knees. You know, so uh, for me, I always like to just think about the hierarchy of position. Like if I'm on top, I would like to generally pass the guard and, and uh, stay on top. If I'm on bottom, I have to reverse, you know. And uh, you just got to be aware of the time, you know, when do points start. But at the same time, you know, if you just keep it flowing and you go with the hierarchy of position, you should be okay, you know. Uh, to me, I I've always just looked at it like that, the hierarchy of position. And, and just remember for ADCC, if I get taken down, you better roll to your knees, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I've, do you know who – do you have any idea who's going to be invited for, for your weight division in Brazil? Do you have – do, they, do you have any idea? Is there any rumors going around who might be in your division? Uh, I mean, you got to think. You got to think Adolfo is going to be in it. Uh, I don't know if Dean Lich is going to do it. Uh, Dry Oasis is going to be in it because he's a returning champ. Uh, you got to think James Popo is going to be in it. I say I would I would have to guess the guy that I beat in the finals, Jimmy Friedrich, will probably be in it again. He had a great match against Pachetra, actually, in 2011, ADCC. Uh, it was, like, even until, like, a minute left or, like, two minutes left or whatever, and Pachetra knee barred him. But, uh, you know, he's an exciting guy, and he's Alvaro's student, you know. Um, mm -hmm. i got to think. I don't know what weight Yuri Samos is going to do. Like, he's been competing ultra heavy, so I don't know if he's going to do the heaviest weight or if he's going to do under 217. But, you know, it's just going to be packed, you know. Like, it's, it's just awesome. I can't wait because I really, really, really like my chances, you know. Like, I really believe I'm going to win. Uh, I believe, uh, I, you know, I, I'm going to go in there with a good strategy, put it that way. I'm going to know every single opponent. I'm going to know exactly what they do. And, uh, you know, I, I think I'll be the dark horse fan, you know. Like, I know I'm, you know, I'm well respected and, uh, you know, people know who I am. But, you know, guys like... You know, I just got back into competing jiu-jitsu, you know, like literally. I, I was I didn't compete jiu-jitsu for four years because of MMA. I started competing again in jiu-jitsu last year. And like since I did, I won three grapplers quest expert divisions. I won the Pan Am's black belt division, no gi. Took third in the world, black belt, uh, no gi, you know, two weeks before my fight. Won a couple of super fights and won the ATCC trials again. So like I'm back, you know what I mean? So I know it's going to be all tough, tough guys, you know what I mean? And I think our division will probably be, like, the toughest, to be quite honest. I think the biggest names will be in there. Besides with Chechis, the heaviest weight, and, you know, like Cabrini and, and Mendez and all those guys uh, will be in the lower weights. So you, you mentioned you, you rattled off a pretty good list of guys in that division. I mean, is there is there one that stands out above all the others that you'd like to face in Brazil? I mean, I, I know you didn't name Comprito, but, it, you know, is there is there one guy that you'd like to face at ADCC, not like a – not like a bad way, like calling them out, just, you know, somebody like to test yourself against. I mean, I think every single one of them is going to be a test, you know. Uh, absolutely. I think Yuri is going to be the, I think Yuri would be the toughest. Uh, he keeps a frantic pace. He's strong. He has great takedowns. You know, he has great guard passing. However, oh, oh, probably uh, who else would be in my division? You know what I like to compete against? 
the hell is it? Oh, Bernardo Faria. Just mm. because he has such a great half guard, and I'm a half guard guy. Yeah. And I have a very, very good understanding of the half guard. You know, oh, uh, I think that would just be a great match. And uh, I, I think, I'm not going to say anything, you know, I just think it would be a good match. So, but I mean, I, it's just great to, I'm not going to say something. It's, it's not an honor to compete against anyone. I don't, I don't give a shit who I compete against, you know, but it's just <laughs> awesome to compete against all of us. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, it's basically in 2009, I was like, oh, I'm honored to be there. No, 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 no. I'm supposed to be there. You know, like, I'm supposed to be there. There's no one who's going to represent it better, I think, than me, you know, my weight, you know. But uh, it, it's awesome to compete against all these guys. You know, they're great guys. They have great jiu-jitsu. You know, everyone poses a different challenge. Some have phenomenal takedowns, like Adolfo and guard passing. You know, some have, like, wicked leg locks, to, like, dry oasis. Uh, you know, James Popolo has, like, crazy knee bars. You know, he's solid everywhere. So, I mean, everybody's good, man. You know, everyone's not good everybody's the best in the world, right? So it doesn't get any better, man. You know, this is our Olympics. Tom, let me ask you a question. How do you get a camp ready? Like, I know MMA fighters, they get their camp strategies. How do you strategize a grappling camp for an event this big? How, how do you go? Is there, like, are you going to follow a certain diet plan? Do you have certain partners that are going to come in? Do you have certain days you're going to do this and that? Strength training? How, how do you go about that? Uh, I train a lot, like, every day. Uh, Sometimes, like, I get, like, like, I do a lot of training in my own school, so I'll get, like, four or five of my guys. For instance, like, like a couple of weeks ago, I had, like, eight guys there, and the deal was I had to submit each one under two minutes in a row, you know? So, like, that kind of challenge, or, like, you know, go from one guy to the next, and they're fresh. Like, I always have fresh guys coming in, and me and my academy, you know, uh, just to keep guys, like, you know, constantly, like, you know, no one's ever tired. But, you know, now... Nowadays, like I do, like one day, I'm, like I'm gonna start doing. Like one day I go in, I'm only gonna defend submissions. One day I'm gonna go in, I'm only gonna guard pass. One day I'm gonna go in, I'm only gonna look for submissions. One day I'm gonna go in, I'm only gonna work on my weaknesses. You know, so it's just great jujitsu. You know, like it's so much more simple to train for a jujitsu competition than MMA. You know, like now it's like it's like a treat. Like I actually love like. Like, it's just what I love to do, you know. So I don't even look at it as a camp. Uh, sure, the diet's going to be tightened up, the conditioning and, and the lifting is going to change a bit, you know. But I'm just doing what I love to do every day, you know what I mean? So basically, a camp is training six days a week, two times a day. Uh, and, and that's it, man. You know, working on your weaknesses, but keeping your strong points uh, sharp at the same time, you know, and keeping that mind strong. You know, a lot of people that mind slips, you know, uh, that's, I, I believe that's a, a great quality that I have in jiu-jitsu, you know, uh, it, you know, I was very successful in MMA, but I never believed my mindset was quite where it was in, in grappling competition, you know, like in grappling competition, I truly, truly, utterly believe that I could beat anyone in the world, you know, uh, especially when, I'll say, especially when there is points, you know, because I do play the system well, and, uh, I believe I could catch anyone in leg locks as well, to be quite honest, you know. So I just have that, that belief in myself that I think a lot of, well, at the Dhabi level, everybody has a belief, right? But, you know, in these trials, I think one of the biggest reasons why I won is because I just probably believed a little bit more that, that I was going to win than the other guys did. I know, you know, after I beat Jimmy in the finals, he was bawling, you know. He was, he was crying, you know. He was so upset. Right there, I, I realized he also he also thought he should win. You know what I mean? Like, it meant a lot to him as well. But I, I just think, you know, I've been there before, and that mindset, believe it or not, is more important than anything. So are, are there any, like, uh, you know, wh how did you develop that mindset? Like, I've, I've seen you talk about, you know, this this positive mindset on, on Facebook before and stuff like that. But, you know, how did you, you know, I mean, it hasn't, has it always been like that from day one or like how, how did you go about, you know, developing your positive mindset for martial arts throughout your career? You know, no, I mean, definitely hasn't always, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've always been successful in the history competition, but I was always around champions, you know, like Ricardo, Hanzo. Uh, I always just, you know, from the time I was a kid, you know, my parents would always tell me like, you deserve to be the best. You know, my mom and my dad told me, you deserve to be the best. Like, it was literally instilled in my brain from the time I could remember. And uh, I'm a big Jesus fan. I'm a big God fan. And, 
you know, I pray a lot and I talk a lot to them. And I constantly tell myself, like, you know, before Jason leaves, I can, you know, Jason is my teammate. And before he went into the finals, I said, listen, man, there's going to be a time in this match where you forget how bad you want this. Your mind's going to play a trick on you, and your mind is going to tell you, oh, I made it to the finals. It's okay if I don't win. I already made it to the finals. I said, guess what? When that happens, you tell your mind it's a bunch of bullshit. Remember why you're here. You know, keep your mind strong. And I'm not going to lie. Two years ago, oh, no, no, last year, I competed against this guy, Mark Foreman, 375 pounds. And he's, and he's a quick 375 pounds. And it was three five-minute rounds, grappling match. And uh, the first round, I started making excuses. Like, oh, you know, people will understand if I lose. He's got over 100 pounds of me. And then I said to myself, I said, listen, man, don't let that weakness creep in your mind. So what I try to do is every aspect of my life, I try to be strong. You know, I try to have a strong mind because the moment you're weak in one aspect of life, I believe, you're weak in every aspect. Like if somebody quits all the time on the mat and they can put them in bad positions, right? I guarantee you they're a quitter in other aspects of their life. If they break every time something's tough on the mat, I guarantee you in a tough situation in life, they're going to break. And you know what? They're not bad people. They just have to get their mind stronger. So the thing is, most people don't focus on their mind, you know, like most people only focus on their technique. I constantly, every day, remind myself how important it is to have a strong mind in the sport, you know, how important it is to believe that you're able to achieve, right? And one of the greatest ways I've, I feel to get your, your mind strong is to train your ass off, you know. You have to believe you deserve to win. If you don't train hard, you're not going to believe you deserve to win, you know, so... Uh, I don't believe anymore in myself, like, oh, I have to lose to learn a lesson. Bullshit. You know, like, I don't go by that, oh, there's winning and there's learning. No, there's winning and there's losing. There's winning and there's losing. If you're not winning, you're losing. And guess what? I don't like to lose. You know, and that that's basically what I have, you know, in my mind. And guess what? I'm 99% sure I would have had an automatic invite to ADCC. Okay? I still chose to compete in the trials with a hurt back. Because I love to win. That's it. I love to win. You know, so people got to focus on it. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. They just got to work on it. And they they got to just start believing, you know, and they got to surround themselves around people who are amazing. Like, you know, my student, Gary Tone, he said to me out there, you know what? He's a professor. He's like, I wouldn't be who I am if you didn't brainwash me from the time I was 15 years old. And what he means by brainwashing is I would sit his ass down. And I would tell him, Gary, you have the ability to be the best. You can be the best in the world if you put forth the effort. Now, I can't take credit for all of Gary's success, right? You know, we have a great team. He trains all over now. But he was with me consistently until he was a brown belt, consistently, you know. Uh, and we still train every week. But the mindset that he has now is a large part of, of the things I've said to him. And my mindset is a large part of the, of the great people that I had around me. Man, that was, that was awesome. There was, yeah, that was, that was, that was, that was real <laughs> awesome. Actually. I'm like, I'm going to, somebody should go back and like transcribe that audio and just, just type yeah. it up so people can just like, look at it. Like yes, once Steph, a day. you're going to have to cut that part right out there. We have to make that its own segment. Yeah. That was, that was like, pretty awesome, Tom. A lot of motivational posters. I want to go train right now. I want to go train right now. You wake up in the morning, you read this real quick before you start the day, and then you go do whatever the hell it is that you were going to do that day, except you do it better than what you had originally planned on doing it because you, you have read your breakfast, books. you have your, your Tom DeBloss, uh little thing Steph is going to make, and then you attack life. I love it. It's awesome. That's, that's it, man. you got to attack life. Like every day I wake up and I'm attacking. Because of, and that's the truth because I, I can't accept mediocrity, you know, because I don't believe – I believe, you know, God has a plan for all of us, right? But we have to achieve our best. And I believe my best is just, could be the best. You know what I mean? So I, I just constantly, I just work hard, man. And, and it just so happens that I love what I do, you know? But I truly don't take excuses. I don't care how I feel. I don't care if I'm sick. I don't care if I'm tired. Man, that, that means nothing. The world doesn't stop for anybody. So I really train through everything, you know, uh, and it's so funny because so many people can be so great. I see it all the time. I, I see, 
so many people to be amazing. They just don't have that work ethic, you know, or they get caught up in drama. They get caught up in, like, thinking, caring about what other people think of them, you know. They'd rather party than train. Like, man, like, you know, I don't even think I'm, like, the most talented, you know, but uh, I, I just worked really hard in my life to get everything that I have, you know. I mean, I know I'm an athletic guy, but I, I just... Man, like, I didn't go to my prom because I was competing in, like, a state championship track meet the, the following day. And there was just no question. And I think that's just how I was brought up with my parents, you know. Like, I never had a choice. Uh, when when shit had to get done, it had to get done, you know, and that's just what it comes down to. So, yeah, you know, we, man, we all we all could do it. You know, I, I truly believe we could. This is the end of the day. Like, one of my favorite things that I like to say, when motivation fails us, you better rely on discipline because guess what? We're, I don't wake up motivated every day. Uh, some days, yeah, I'm tired. I feel sick. You know, shit, man, my back is hurting. My body's – I had two knee surgeries. I dislocated both shoulders. I mean, sometimes things get tough, but I'm disciplined. You know, I'm just, just like I'm going to brush my teeth every day, I'm going to train every day, right? So that's all it comes down to. Definitely. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump off subject here a little bit. I'm going to go back to a – an event earlier this year at the Worlds. You, I believe you were in the semifinals against Comprito. Is that correct? Yes. And there was a did he? There was a little controversy in the match. I know Gary was uh, on social media. He had some some uh, some things to say about that match. I seen the match, and it seemed that I believe Comprito won on advantage at the end. Is that correct? Uh, no, he won by points. What was it? Was it uh, points? Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll tell you what happened. Yeah, talk so us through that a little bit. Yeah, like, you know, I'm not, man, I'm not a complainer unless there needs, a, there needs to be a reason to complain. Like, right before the match, he had on the wrong shorts. He, his shorts were illegal. They look at me, and they ask me if I have shorts that he could borrow. I said, oh, shit, here we go. It's going to be one of these matches, right? So we start the match, whatever. He shoots. I sprawl. I go to spin. He pulls guard. I'm knee slicing through, and I'm posting on his ear, not his throat, on his ear and on the side of his face, not his, not his jugular. I'm not covering his mouth, and the referee starts to warn me. I'm like, warn? What the hell are you warning me for? Like, this is weird. Like, I'm posting on his, on his ear. Then, he takes a negative one. He hits me with a negative one for posting on his ear because computer, whatever. I must have flattened him out in a half guard about seven or eight times. So I would flatten, computer would recover, I would I would I would end up flattening again, you know, uh we would change positions, you know, I would end up standing or whatever, I would get back down, you know, I got like I got one advantage for that. But the negative one he hit me with was just completely atrocious, you know, because I'm like, man, now I can't even post. So then I'm I'm <laughs> we're not even out of bounds. I have both under his head I'm going to hook his arm. I'm working a pass, and he stops us. He moves us to the – we're not even close to out of bounds. He moves us to the middle, starts us at a neutral half guard position, and says, fight. I pass the guard clean. Comprito looks up and starts complaining. The referee stops me, puts me in deep half guard, a position I wasn't in the whole entire match. He puts me in deep half guard, perfect sweep position for Comprito. There's 45 seconds left. He ends up getting the sweep. Comprito is a legend. One of the best ever, right? Won two absolute world titles. Guess what? I don't care. You're n you don't win that way. You don't celebrate victory that way. I don't have it. I, I respect his accomplishments. And you know what? I'm sure he's a great guy. I hear great things about him, you know? I don't have nothing against him personally. I have something against the guy I competed against that day. I don't have nothing against him as a man. I'm sure he's a great guy. We could be friends. I don't like the man I competed against that day. I don't like who he was. I don't like that he celebrated a victory that was not a victory. I want to compete against him again. You know, I want that match in, in, in a super fight. 
I want a no time limit. No time. I don't even want a fucking. I don't want 20 minutes of metamorphs. I want a no time limit. Submission only match for him. You know. And yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. I thought I heard about a metamorphs. A rumored match. I heard. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would take that in a heartbeat, and then the more. So they just got to put it together. I don't think he would accept it, though. Uh, and that's not to say he's scared of me. You know, maybe he just doesn't want to take it. You know, I don't. I don't know why he would want to take it. He felt how I felt in Ted Bennett. Uh, you know, twenty minutes is much longer. And you know, maybe he's at a different point in his life. He's not competing as much or whatever. But at the same time, he stepped in the adult division in the world, right? And he, he, he won a, a very controversial match. And again, let me reiterate, I don't hate Comprito. I respect the amazing things that he, he's done in this sport, right? Uh, he's done great things. To, man, to be one of three or four people, to be one of four people who won the absolute title two times is just, he, he's a legend. But no. I don't give a shit about the guy who beat me that day. And, and and I want to no no the guy who they said beat me and I would love to go against him again you know uh, let's go where we can do our heel hooks so we can reap that leg where we can get after it and we can do everything we don't gotta worry about you know advantages and this and that uh, I would love to have that match back man you know it really re- <sighs> man that stung that that Tom, really Tom, really hurt Tom do you think uh, race I know it's gonna sound weird do you think race came into play into it. Nationality. What's it? Nationality. I'm sorry. Do you think nationality oh, oh. came into play? I'm sorry. Let me let me let me let me re, let me let me rephrase that. Do you think nationality? Is that some Brazilian favoritism? You know, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say team favoritism. I'm gonna say you know he's part of the Cayotera Association, and I'm sure that these guys knew each other. They knew Comprio. He's been around for a long time. You know, I like to just completely stay away from any race thing, whether it be black, white, Brazilian, I don't like to believe that, right? So I don't like to believe that he won because he's Brazilian. If other people want to make assumptions that he did, that's fine. I love the Brazilians on my team. You know, I have some, like, some of my best friends are Brazilian. You know, so, no, I'm not even going to say that. I do think, however, they knew him personally, and that's why it went the way it went, you know, uh, it is what it is. It really pissed me off, man. Holy shit, it pissed me off. I mean, for for a while, man, like, it still bothers me. But it is what it is, you know, because what would have happened was that I won that match, and then I would have I beat the next guy for sure, you know. Very tough guy, Gabriel Lucas. He was winning everything. He won the Pan Ams. But just stylistically, uh, I would have beat him. And then the finals would have been against Yuri. And Yuri won the absolute division as well. But I saw... Some things that he did wrong when he went against Bernardo Faria, right? Uh, he got swept a couple times. I just thought everybody played a stupid game with Yuri. You can't stand with him. If he's taking you down time and time again, get pull guard. You know, he was winning on take, taking people down and then passing their guard, but he did get swept a few times, right? So, got a, so I, I would have just loved the opportunity to compete against him because he, he was on fire, man. You know, like he, he looked really, really good. But obviously, really you've impressed. seen something that gave you something mentally where you want to go against. You saw something, obviously. Yeah, I thought Bernardo could have won, man. You know, I thought he just left his arm out there at the long time, and Yuri ended up catching it. Uh, you know, I was really impressed with Yuri. Like, man, this guy is—he's focused. You know, he's a—he uh, comes out there fired up. You know what I mean? And and I love that. I think that's great. Uh, that that doesn't bother me though. Like he could be as fired up as you want, and you could, you know, pound your chest. Like it's impossible to get in my head. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's not just that he's fired up. The kid has the guy is phenomenal jujitsu. You know what I mean? Like he's he, he's amazing everywhere. You know, so who wouldn't want to compete against someone who's just tearing through everyone? Because you know we want to be the one to knock him off his high horse, right? So. Yeah, I would have loved to be that guy to to test myself against him, but it just didn't, you know, God had other plans that day. Yeah. Or the the referee had other plans had other plans that day. So, you know, we just talked a little bit about, you know, the IBJJF worlds. We've been talking about ADCC, some different super fights and stuff. Do you do you have a, a favorite set of rules to compete under? Or is there like one ideal set of rules that that you favor above all the others? Uh, I, 
Yeah, man, I like ADCC rules. I like Metamor. I, I, I love IBJJF. I just wish we could heal hook. Yeah. I wish we could read the leg. I, I wish we could... Don't have to worry about, like, turn... Like, even now with Achilles locks, man, like, you can't turn your knees in. I think that's so... You know, I just don't like that, man. Because you have to compete scared. You know what I mean? Like, you can... Like, I... You know, look at the last match with me and Jimmy. That never would have been a match in the IBJJF. And even though we were caught in the 50-50, like, it wasn't a boring 50-50 match. Like, we were going after our heels, you know what I mean? So every time you go after a heel, it's like, you got to cringe because I think you had me pretty tight in a heel a few times, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it was exciting. It was fun. But when you take that away, it just takes away such a, a huge part, like, of, uh, like, man, like, Gary lost in the finals of the Pan Ams against Gianni. Gianni's fantastic, right? I guarantee if there were heels allowed, Gary would have taken his heel home. You know, so it's like, you're just, it's just not, it's not as real when you can't do that. Like, man, we're not, we're already not punching each other. You know, we're not kicking each other. We can't, black belts can't heel hook. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm so, I support the IBJF. You know, I support any, organizing, like, you know, man, like, I won, like, the Brown Belt Worlds, the Brown Belt Pan Am, the Brown Belt National, the Black Belt Pan Am, so I support them, but we need to be, I would, I would just be so happy if we could heal up, you know, so any tournament that allows us to do every technique possible is the one that I would rather be in, you know, because even me, like, I don't want to, like, man, like, I, you know, I just don't fear even getting leg locked in the IPG. I'm not going to say it can happen like a straight Achilles lock. You know, it's just like it's really hard to Achilles lock someone when you can't even turn in. You know, so it's like, eh, I don't know. Let us heal with each other, man. So you have pretty much all aspects of your life, like, in, in control. You know, you've got your gym, your students, your competitive career, your family. Uh, you dished out some pretty serious life advice. Uh, earlier in the podcast when you said, you know, attack life and we're going to, we're going to transcribe that for everybody so they can look at it every day. Do you have any, do you have any more life advice, like some parting words of wisdom that, that everybody could benefit from? Yeah. I don't have it as together as everybody thinks. People look at my Facebook and they think my life is perfect. Guess what? My life is not perfect. You know, I have, I have problems. I wake up to bullshit every single day. You know, I'm not like family problems. You know, my family, life is great, you know. But I'm like, it's just like, I've just been through a lot in my life. But, you know, I didn't wake up with things perfect. You know, like, I've seen a lot in my life. I've been through a lot in my life. I suffered a lot, whether it be competitively or other aspects. Uh, I worked a lot, you know. Uh, so... We have to remember that it's normal to feel bad. It's normal to to, to suffer. It, 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 it's, these things make us stronger. You know, like the last two days I've been going through a lot of bull crap with stupid, like, geese that I'm ordering, and it's like, man, I got ripped off, you know? Like, oh, <laughs> for, like a lot happy. of money. <laughs> for, like, a lot of money. You know what? What am I going to do? i got to pick myself up. I got to put a smile on my face because people need me. And that's what it comes down to, you know? So I, I wish everyone would just remember that when things happen bad in their life, you know, especially jujitsu practitioners, like don't let this keep you away from the mats because no one's alone. You know, we're all in this together. You know, we're all suffering. We're all going through our bad times. But when we come together, things get a little bit better. You know, when we come together, we can help each other. When we come together and we feed off that positive energy, you know, like, if you're feeling bad and you, you, you walk on the mats and, and you have a bunch of positive people around you, like you're going to leave feeling better, you know? So life is a fight, man. It, it, it's a struggle. And the ones who are going to be most successful are the ones who just keep picking themselves up over and over and over. And I already know I'm still going to suffer more in my life. You know what? It is what it is. So be it. You know, like I always like to say, I've seen the best, but I've never seen the worst. I've seen some pretty bad shit, but I've never seen the worst, you know? So, my advice is keep going forward, man. That's it. And just for my jiu-jitsu practitioners around the world, learn to love jiu-jitsu. I had a blue belt from Australia email me, and he lost a, a very important competition. And I said, man, I said, 
he was really down. He really felt bad. I said, why do you feel bad? I said, you could go to the gym tomorrow and train again. You know, be thankful that you could train tomorrow. Like, if you truly love jiu-jitsu and you learn to love jiu-jitsu, not love winning. See, that was my problem with MMA. I never loved MMA. I loved winning in MMA. I loved winning. I didn't love training in MMA. I love jiu-jitsu. So learn how jiu-jitsu could benefit your life. Everyone's not going to be a world-class competitor. Everybody's not going to be able to train seven days a week. Even if you can train one day a week, that's 52 times at the end of the year that you're doing something that most people aren't doing. So learn how to fit jiu-jitsu in your life where it can benefit you. Because to me, it's like the greatest thing in the world. You know, like nothing is better than jiu-jitsu. You know, because I found the true meaning for myself. So find your meaning. That's it. Hey, thanks a lot, Tom. Uh, are there any uh, sponsors, uh, you know, your gym website, ways to get a hold of you for seminars and stuff like that? Uh, the, the mic's yours if you want to uh, go ahead. Yeah, like my sponsor, Phalanx, uh, really, really stepped up, man. You know, like uh, Nick Horseman on Facebook and Chris Martinez, these guys uh, behind Phalanx, you know, I really love these guys. Uh, seminars, you know, I'm, 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 almost, I'm like 95% sure I'll be in uh, Australia this spring. I will be in Hong, Hong Kong, Beijing. In Thailand, uh, so my spring is gonna be a little little packed. But if people wanna wanna learn and and, and they wanna get some, like I'm training at my seminars too. Like I'm not just going to a seminar and teaching. Like I'm rolling. We're rolling. If I go to a seminar, you know. So if anyone wants to get like they want to contact me, email me on Facebook. Follow my athletes page because every day I have to delete more people on Facebook and I feel bad. But I reached my capacity. I think I knocked off like 50 people yesterday. Uh, that I, you know, I, I don't really communicate with. But, you know, you, you could always email me on my personal account, but definitely like my athlete's page because my friend's uh, list is, is, like, I feel really bad. I have, like, 400 pending friend requests, and it makes me feel like a dirtbag because I really want to, like, accept everybody, but Facebook won't let me, you know. So that's all. I'll, I'll always return every single email that has ever written to me there is no stupid question. You could be a white belt who started training the first week. You know, ask me how you want to be a UFC fighter. I might say, hey, man, shut up and train jiu-jitsu for a little while before I thought about being a UFC fighter. But I'm going to respond. You know, I'm going to respond to everybody. So I'm there if you want. That's awesome. Tom, thanks for coming on. That was, uh, that was a great interview. It was great hearing, you know, your philosophies on, on life. That was – I'm definitely going to go back and listen to this a couple more times this week. and. Uh, I'm going to have to listen to it, you know, all by myself and just to absorb it in. That was pretty good. But thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Tom. Good night. Bye-bye. That was pretty awesome. I'm, I'm one of those 400 people on the pending list. <laughs> oh, I got in. I got in. I got in. See, I was, I was yeah, late yeah. on the bandwagon. I, yeah, you got, I jumped on the bandwagon quick. I, I knew. I knew. I knew. Yeah. I knew he was going to be... I knew he was going to the to Brazil, so I jumped in on. I jumped in on quick. Too slow. <laughs> it's okay. You gotta be quick with that request button, man. You gotta be gotta ready to go. I'm always, I'm always a step behind, but, I but I can. I'm, I'm, right. follow, I'm following him, so I can still see all the good stuff he posted, like That's the, uh, you know, the importance of the leg locks. He he posted that. Yeah. Uh, right after ADCC, he was, you know, he he made a big post. If if you guys haven't read it, check it out on his Facebook wall. Just talked about the the importance of leg locks. And like we were talking about, you know, before the show started there, there have been some statistics on the previous ADCCs like 2011, 2013, where they broke it down and, you know, heel hooks took up the majority of the, uh, the submissions at the 2011 ADCC. And, uh, yeah, like, I mean, I know nobody's seen the match with Tom DeBlass and Jimmy Frederick cause we didn't film it, but you know, a good portion of it was, was spent fighting for footlocks and, and it, and it wasn't the typical, like, you know, hold the guy in 50, 50 attempt a straight footlock while the other guy stands up, knock him over and repeat. Like they were, they were getting after it. Like, Oh, wow. Tom said it was it was cringeworthy. So, you know, I'd I'd like to see more tournaments allow reaping the knee. I know that there aren't many, uh, but the ones that do, it's it's entertaining. Yep, definitely. Once it's happening to you, then you're like this.
Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Well, anyways, this is our last show this year. So this is our uh, farewell to 2014. We'll be back 2015. And uh, we're going to have uh, Darren Branch. Nice. Show of the year, January 8th. Nice. It's Maybe. a good way to start the year off. Yeah, yes. good. Whenever you have Darren on, it's always good. To, that's a good way to start the year. Like is, he's got that. he's got some more jujitsu philosophy he wants to share with yeah. us. We could ask he him has about some his philosophy too. I like listening to him too. We could ask him about his professional wrestling debut. Yes, that's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Other things. So, uh, with that, we're gonna sign off for the year. Everybody have a good week. Have a good holiday, and we'll see everybody in two weeks. <laughs>